this is how I lose a language and want it back when the only words I know are estoy bien. I don't know what my first sentences as a baby sounded like, but I can imagine the sweetness of the island wrapped around my words. The conquistador's tongue shape shifted with Afro-Indigenous roots. Like abuela stories to my five-year-old self about the warm breeze and coconut trees while letting mango juice drip down my chin while the rest slide down my throat. Closing my eyes and mimicking words of articulation, learning how to roll R's as if that would make me immune to forgetting those who came before me. The same ones who let their Spanish words flow like streams along New York City sidewalks on hot, sticky days. I like to imagine the relief that my words brought to my parents. Because assimilation don't sleep, and it don't feel right when you can't communicate with the people back home. And lineage don't mean nothing if you don't understand what they're saying. Can you understand what I'm saying? Because I can hear you, but I forgot my language back home. Told my parents to put in the box of all the stretched out clothes and send it back to where they came from. Shame kept knocking on my door, so I sent it packing. And it took my Spanish with it. The rhythm my ancestors bestowed upon me, whites washed and scrubbed to its core, exposed and vulnerable. Reinstated by school curriculums that don't care about how to communicate with your own people, the conquistador's tongue laced with poison. Estoy bien means nothing. And to my parents, te quiero only go so far. Silence don't mend connections when your own parents don't even know what's being said. No te entiendo, followed by never mind. Spanish holds tight around my throat until I start to lose consciousness. Makes these broken pieces cut my tongue. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe the Spanish was never meant to fit me. So please, when you finally hear me say, no, es no estoy bien, understand that this is not a stutter. This is a cry for help. I need validation. Give me an interpretation. No more lost in translation. Because I forgot what it was like to feel my own culture on the tip of my tongue. Please, don't forget to tell me that I haven't lost it yet. His hands made contact with my skin, and I couldn't help but flinch, and I couldn't help but flinch. It wasn't from the cold, I just, I just don't like to be touched or shown affection. Cause most of the time, it's usually just lies and false attention. Seeing this happen with a couple girls my age, left so broken to the point where they were digging their own graves, with babies carried on their backs, bearing the weight of what was left and what was never there. My mother tells me that people crave power over skin, that people want power over people. So distance between two people prevents one from taking advantage of the other. I used to not like to be touched, but he asked for my permission to gain access to my thoughts so he can understand the power I have over him. He told me that I got a power running through each vein, so deep into my being that I don't even know that each step shoots heartbreak and fear into the ground, as if uncertainty was orbiting around me. I think there should be an absence between us. So when his hands make contact with my skin, I hold my breath a little. The space between us becomes almost non-existent. He traces my hands with his fingers, looks into my eyes, but doesn't say anything. I can't know if he's lying if he doesn't say anything. Hesitated to make contact once again, cause he knows that self-destructive bombs go off unannounced. The ability to destroy ties and connections 
Love and affection, myself, happens for touch, with just an overstep of a boundary. Love shoveled three feet deep, almost dead, given a hand to rise. He willingly supports my weight of this internalized fear by how to rush past men on street corners while reassuring me that everything's gonna be okay, even though we know it's not. So when he pulls me into him, cold hands on my skin, he asked me why I didn't flinch, and I could finally breathe again. One point away from being in third place, and that is Leslie Moreau. Clap for Leslie.